This is Joshua Tree with Butterfly Power, and it is my absolute honor to share with you the United States Agrovoltaic Energy Storage and EV Microgrid Market Intelligence Analysis. This is a comprehensive analysis of the United States from the macro to the micro, with a deep dive into the key sectors of agriculture, energy, water, and transportation and how the very serious and structural problems that we face within each of these sectors are creating compound negatives because these sectors are interconnected and interrelated with each other. And yet agrovoltaics, energy storage, and EV microgrids create synergistic and an elegant solution, transforming those compound negatives into compound positives. And this is about transforming our today and our future through our farms and ranches. A restructuring from inflationary pressures to total reduction in expenses and the integration of new and diverse revenue streams, many of which are long-term in nature, transforming which is a key problem for agricultural families, which is how can the next generation continue this rich heritage? And it provides a bridge to continue land stewardship tending to the animals, and really feeding our communities, but also powering them. And it's about creating new economic opportunity at the farm and the ranch level beyond just agriculture that turbocharges everything that farms and ranches are creating by putting in a solid economic foundation. And it's about creating new decentralized and distributed generation that's mirrored with the local resources and then energy storage for us to be able to hold those and time shift that energy until it's optimal to use. But it's also about creating efficiency. Our energy and our water system are wildly inefficient. 65% of all the energy that we create is lost in transmission. Agriculture is by far the largest sector of water consumption and 40 to 50% of that water in many areas is wasted. So it's about creating ultra efficiency. And this is an investment opportunity. I don't come to you from any specific license, but with 20 years experience in finance and in development of residential, commercial, industrial, and agricultural operations, integrating hybrid generation and storage microgrids with electric vehicle integration, and also into mobile communities. So it's an opportunity to invest our resources, our most precious resources of our time, our attention, our work, and our money and capital. And to highlight that the Latin root of money is moneta, and it means to trust, and that we intelligently invest our time, our attention, and create clear plans for our work within projects, then we our money and capital can trust. And we can have projects with high potential for success and mitigated risks. And it's an invitation for all to come and join in this great and good work, specifically for farmers and ranchers, but all of those in the energy sector, from the solar installers and the microgrid technicians to auto mechanics and investors who are looking to invest their capital to create a more regenerative future, to politicians, government bodies, nonprofits and NGOs, and to anyone who's looking for regenerative solutions and also an ability in a very challenging economic situation to participate in new emerging markets with an abundance of upside and potential. And that we're going to go through at a high level this market intelligence analysis, but would really invite you to invest your time to go through the full two hours. You can find the whole presentation available for download. All of the resources are linked to the top level R&D and the leading many government organizations that are supporting all of these sectors that can be brought together into this synergistic solution. And also to manufacturers and technology providers with examples brought down into concrete examples around specific large and small farms and ranches showing the path forward. And I humbly offered that this is the greatest investment opportunity of all time. Now, you may be accurately thinking that is a bold statement, even hyperbolic. And I am being precisely and technically hyperbolic 
agrivoltaic storage systems and electric vehicle microgrids are the greatest investment opportunity of all time. It may be helpful to review hyperbolic growth and decline as it relates to exponential growth. And these are often confused because they both feature ever increasing rates of growth or decline. And we can see here in the green is an exponential growth trajectory versus the red, which is hyperbolic. And the main difference is that exponential growth grows towards infinity with time, where hyperbolic growth becomes an infinity at a point in time in a dramatic event known as the singularity. And hyperbolic growth can be slow over a long time and then fast over a short time. So if we wanted an example of hyperbolic growth, we can only look at the human population over the last 10,000 years. And for the 9,800, there weren't that many humans, but over the last 300 years, we can see this as hyperbolic growth for a population where it's been doubling in population in an ever declining amount of years. And what's clear is that all of this hyperbolic growth is really magnifying the problems in the key sectors of ag, energy, water, and transportation in that it's not sustainable for us to continue having hyperbolic growth. And there's already natural forces at play to really slow this, but it is the good example of hyperbolic growth. And as we look at the agrovoltaic storage and EV microgrid market in these core sectors, that these are synergistic solutions to the core challenges. And that in each one of these sectors inside of this market intelligence analysis, hyperbolic growth is possible. And in many of them, exponential growth is already occurring. And this is a multi-sector opportunity that covers full spectrum technology to come in and support this interconnected and interrelated elegant solution. And I want to really take a moment to root this in a Buckminster Fuller quote that is so inspiring to me, but I also think has a lot of wisdom which he said, humans have a destiny to serve as information gatherers and local stewards of their local community. They're part of the cosmos in support of the integrity of an internally regenerative universe and made a call for people to start operating with integrity from the Latin integritas, meaning wholeness or a perfect condition to convert their experience to the highest advantage of all, to love comprehensively, and to live in service of the whole living system that each of us is a part of. And to really focus that this is a holistic solution that brings us into greater integritas, into greater integrity, and that the cosmos is really supporting us through the eternally regenerative universe to really be able to better steward the abundance of resources that we have available. And in this analysis, we're going to use the Kith his perspective, which is keep it simple, sophisticated. And as da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So with that in mind, we're going to look at what agrivoltaics is, which is the combination of agriculture and solar that creates synergistic effects at the nexus of food, energy, water, and soil with the acronym, the FUSE. And that Agrovoltaics has a very broad scale application from rural to urban and includes crops, grazing, fencing, orchards, berries, vineyards, greenhouses in an urban area, urban farms and rooftop and goes from large farms to small farms, gardens and microgrids. And that this is a macro to micro understanding where we're going to look at the macro U.S. market but then look at Utah State as a part of a seven state regional market of Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, and how a electric cooperative called Deseret Power, which is really six member cooperatives, plays an instrumental role in the transformation of the diverse ecology and geography of Utah, but also how it translates into the seven state regional market and go all the way to a town of Boulder within the central and eastern Utah region to a microgrid of one ranch of 160 acres connected to one of these six member cooperatives. And we want to look at agrovoltaic market potential. And NREL create, created this seminal comprehensive study to assess this potential 
and it found that 1% of US farmland converted to agrivoltaics, 10.3 million acres, could provide 100% of the renewable energy targets that we have until out to 2050. And that this would represent an investment or a cost of $1.2 trillion. And that had a payback period of 17 years over a 35 year project life. So taking that 1% of farmland transformed into agrovoltaics can meet 100% of the energy targets. And we'll deep dive into exactly what those targets mean. And also from NREL in the Solar Futures study, I looked at, well, how much power do we actually have? And this is an analysis of all of the renewable energy resource abundance in the United States, where it finds that we have 463,000 terawatts of annual energy available in the United States. Currently, in the United States, we consume 4,000 terawatts of electricity, which means there's 100x available our current electrical and uh, electrical consumption demands, and we're currently accessing only 0.2% of those resources. So we have a abundance of energy perfectly distributed across all of the Republic. And then as we look at these different systems, well, we can say we have a 1 billion acres of agricultural land that's divided into 392 million acres of cropland and then 655 million acres of grassland and pasture where we can integrate these technologies with regenerative rotational grazing, regenerative mixed crops and greenhouses combined with energy storage, EV fleets, public charging um, networks, and then also precision irrigation, water conservation, storage and efficiency, and how all of this can be beneficial to our pollinators who bring life to the flowers and to the fields and also to the native species and the forests that surround our beautiful farms and ranch lands. And that if we look at agrovoltaics simply, that it we're stacking functions, much like in permaculture, in that we want to bring a holistic perspective of the power grid, the agricultural grid, and the water grid, and how that impacts the soil grid to really create these synergic solutions through stacking of these functions. And that this all represents a quantum leap. And it began being technical here. The quantum leap really represents a shift in energy level, at least from the perspective of physics. And so at Butterfly Power, we define the quantum leap as shifting from super consumption, which we are the world's greatest super consumers, and that we are 3E dependent, energy, economic, and environmentally dependent, and that our consumption is currently rooted in high in efficiency. And what we want to shoot, what we want to create is super production. And using the technical term of super, which is above, beyond, or a higher path, and that we're going to use super systems in order to create more than enough. But the reality is it's also about being ultra efficient. And that super production is taking ultra efficiency and that we want to look at is the delta. That's where the abundance comes from. The difference between producing more than enough and being ultra efficient and to really root down super systems that everywhere on the land there is indigenous energy, sun, the wind, the soil, the water that produces all of life from the earth system. And that we can break this into different channels that we can represent these different powers from biopower through agriculture and what be considered waste. In nature, there is no waste. It's just another currency stream. Geopower from thermal and the generation, wind power, solar power, both electrical and thermal, and how that integrates with hydropower and fluid dynamics for hot and cold and filtrating water and the ability to generate power. And also that Data and information are also currency streams, our ability to integrate digital farming and to have high secure data and information systems. And then we want that to all flow into hybrid energy storage systems where we can hold the hot and the cold, where we can store the electrical power and hold the water and to be able to utilize data and information processing systems to be able to create super production in an ultra efficient system and to be able to push the Delta. 
the abundance of the space between. And again, to use Buckminster Fuller and his infinite wisdom, that super production, super systems, and ultra efficiency are really more with lessing. As Bucky said, ephemeralization. And this is the ability of technological advancement to do more with less and less until eventually you can do everything with nothing. That is an accelerating increase in the efficiency of achieving the same or more output. So this is about ephemeralization of our core sectors to create super productions using super systems and becoming ultra efficient. And then we're gonna look at the state of farming and ranching, how it currently sits today and look back at the history of agricultural transformation and how from the 1850s until 1935, we added an incredible amount number of farms peaking out at 6.8 million farms. But then over the next 20 years, we lost 2 million farms. And over the following 20 years, we lost another 2.6 million farms. And concurrently, the average farm size increased in the number of acres per farm. And the land and farms has in, in total acres has gone up, but has recently gone down. And we're gonna really look at how integrating agrovoltaic storage systems really creates the potential for exponential growth that we could add another million farms, another 2 million farms, 3 million farms. Just 75 years ago, we had almost 7 million farms. Why couldn't we have that again? And that we could also bring down the average farm size to have more distributed and inside of this analysis, we're gonna see how 90% of all the farms in the United States are small family farms. And then we could have a lot more small farms, but also homesteads and market gardens from rural to urban. And that we could also bring back up again, the acreage that we have in farmland. And then we're gonna look at the drought conditions and the water system and how wildly inefficient it is and how environmentally that inefficiency is creating massive pressures um, on all aspects, but specifically on agriculture. And we're gonna look at the overall flow of water systems in the United States from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And this shows the flow of surface, surface water, that's salt water and groundwater, and how it flows into the public supply, commercial, industrial, mining, aquaculture. But right there in the middle are two biggest sectors. 41% of all water goes into irrigation and 39% goes into thermoelectric cooling. 80% of all of our water goes into agriculture and power generation. And how through irrigation, we lose 36% of all of that water is wasted in consumption or evaporation. And then a huge portion of both of those systems are discharged to surface water. So representing the huge inefficiencies in our systems that agrovoltaics combined with precision irrigation can create ultra efficiency. And then we're gonna look at the state of the power grid, the world's most modern and advanced grid that is also aging, decaying, and needs to be upgraded. And similar to the water flows from Lawrence Warren Liver, Moore National Laboratory, this is the energy flow of all of the energy generation from solar, hydro, wind, geothermal, natural gas, coal, biomass, and petroleum as it flows into residential, commercial, industrial, and transportation sectors. And to really highlight that in the electrical generation, 65% of all energy generated is, is lost as rejected energy. So again, huge inefficiencies in our electrical system. And then if we look into transportation, we can see a similar pattern. Petroleum being powering most of the transportation system in gas and diesel, we lose 60% of all that energy is lost as rejected energy. So a massive opportunity for ultra efficiency through the integration of electric vehicles. And then we're gonna look at what's possible for the macro grid and how we already have in transformation, the move from this aging older grid to a new super grid with high capacity, high voltage DC and AC, making transmission across the continental United States possible. And that this super grid is already coming into form and really creating a massive opportunity for distributed 
and decentralized generation to come from areas that have really not been available because the transmission system there wasn't available to receive it, but now is. And how moving from the centralized to a decentralized, to a distributed system creates not only more efficiency, but also greater resiliency. And when we talk about security, there's nothing more important than energy security, because without energy, none of the rest of the sectors work anymore. And that by moving to a distributed generation model outside of physical destruction in, a, in an area, it's kind of indestructible. One, you know, is tentative to use it, but kind of becomes bulletproof, if you will. But even in the event of an earthquake or a fire or a hurricane, something that physically destroys it, it has such a, a, a more sensitive and powerful way to regenerate itself from the edges versus the hub and spoke centralized system that is so prone to failure and is very fragile. And we're experiencing the breakdown of that system now. And we're going to look at the energy storage market, a critical way to store all of this energy. And then look at the electric vehicle and charging market and how we can transform our transportation sector and all of the exciting development that's already underway and how co-locating solar generation with energy storage with covered EV parking creates an elegant solution to this sector transformation. And then what's possible for farming and ranching. And looking at the potential for project economics and how solar and energy storage is already a very strong sector, but through the tax credits, grants, and rebates, how all of the microgrid and energy storage systems have the capacity to be discounted 60 to 80% through a whole spectrum of tax credits, grants, and rebates, but specifically focus on the big three of the solar investment tax credit, USDA REAP grant, and then depreciation, in a, not including all of the many more federal, state, and local programs to achieve an 80% reduction in economic cost. And break that down into some concrete examples of a utility scale microgrid, and then also a smaller microgrid. And then looking at the population map of the United States and how 50% of the United States is clustered in just 5% of the counties living in 146 out of 3,142 uh, total counties. And as we create this new economic model in our rural areas around farms and ranches, it creates the economic stability for people to move out of the urban areas and experience a thriving economic opportunity, but also the ability to come and do in this great and good work and tend to the land and for more farmers and ranchers to be supportive for generations to come. And it's interesting when you look at just one of the counties, LA, where there's 10.1 million people, that's larger than the populations of 12 states combined. So as we look at the opportunity from one farmer ranch to install agrovoltaic storage in an EV microgrid, putting a megawatt on five to 10 acres with inter integrated precision irrigation, putting a one plus megawatt hour energy storage with an electric vehicle fleet and a public EV charging station. Out of the 2.1 million farms that we currently have in the US on the billion acres of land with the 58 million acres of water system and through the NREL study, the 10.3 million acres we would need to achieve 100% of the renewable energy targets, we can see that just 1% of the farms, less than 20,000, would be needed in order to achieve and begin this great transformation. And that this 1% of the 2.1 million farms is really only a, an initial target where we could meet the goals, but the reality is we could do 2% or 3% or 4%. And at Butterfly Power, we've taken um, from the USDA census in 2017, created a market analysis where you can look by county throughout the United States to see how many farms are each individual county. And we then created a spreadsheet, which you can download at butterflypower.org to say, well, what does 0.01% look like? What does that 1% look like? Poor county. And then through the Utah market intelligence analysis, looking at one 
cooperative Deseret Power, and then focusing on one of those six member cooperatives, Garcane Energy, we can see all of the counties within that service area and then try and take it out. What would it look like if we did 9%? What would it look like if we did 90%? And we can see a future where we have way more than enough power. And just to take a macro picture and to kiss the United States, keeping it simple, sophisticated, to recognize that the United States is 5% of the global population, yet we consume 25% of the world's resources, use 25% of the world's energy, and create 30% of the world's waste. And the reality is, with 330 million Americans, if China at 1.35 billion and India with 1.24 billion tried to live like us, we would need two Earths for just those three countries. And there's a lot more than just these three countries. So <clears throat> to really look at the United States is the most wealthy and abundant republic that the world has ever seen. And the way that that economically has been measured is in GDP or gross domestic product. So if we look in 2022, the US GDP was $19.43 trillion. And if we break that down by major category, we can see that the largest sector of the GDP is called consumption. And it's interesting that all of this existing system is really trying to stimulate our consumption. So we have $13.62 trillion in consumption. And to put that into context, that 68% of GDP, we look at it and we break that down into all the categories of major expenditures. We can see that by far there are three of the biggest. And of that 13.92 trillion, 63% of it or 9 trillion is in housing, transportation, and food. And to recognize that our consumption can be directed from its current focal point into investing into high quality regenerative produced food and more locally sourced from the farms and ranches within our community. And that we have an opportunity with on our housing and our transportation sector to direct those resources, this abundance of wealth that we have every year that we're already spending. We don't need any new government spending. We're already spending all of it, um, $9 trillion budget. And to put that into context, the U.S. consumption of $13 trillion is bigger than the GDP, almost as big as the GDP of China, double and a half Japan, and almost four times as big as Germany, the top three economies. So our consumption is a super power. And our ability to redirect that consumption into a more regenerative future, because the truth is, we become the largest empire the world has ever seen. And the reality is, we become a nation state of super consumers. We're the world's greatest debtors, and we currently lead the world in consumption, debt, waste, war power, and dependence. But that's not our heritage. Um, we are a great republic in that we are also producers. And through this market intelligence analysis, I would offer we have the capacity to be the world's greatest super producers because we're blessed with so much wealth, natural wealth, very advanced sector wealth in all of these key sectors, and then also economic wealth. And that our heritage is to be the land of the free and the home of the brave and the opportunity through individual transformation of my home, your home, our communities, through our farms, ranches, we have the ability to again lead the world in production, integrity, integritas, innovation, and freedom. And not through projecting that out to the world, but rather by leading by example, not telling the, other, the rest of the world how they should live, but by showing them how we're living, and then trading with them because we're leading as this continued great innovation hub and providing the technology to support all of the other humans and all of the other countries to find their own way in their own time and to chart their own path. So just to sum up, 
This is an opportunity to energize the fuse of the regenerative transformation and that agrovoltaics and energy storage systems really stimulate the nexus of the food, energy, and water and soil system. And within all of this information and understanding, I would offer that we are the greatest of all generations, if only because we've been blessed with so much. And all of our grandmothers and grandfathers and fathers and mothers and aunties and uncles and brothers and sisters who've come before us, who've worked for so much and so many of whom have prayed for a time like this. And so many of the prophecies from all cultures talk of this time of great transformation and to reflect and deeply understand that we live in the wealthiest, most abundant land with the greatest potential for freedom in the history of all humankind. An invitation not just to think it, but to really take a moment to reflect, to take a breath, to bring our awareness to what we have to work with and to recognize as individuals within our communities, we are surrounded by the conditions to create a better future and a brighter tomorrow. And to recognize we do have serious challenges. And yet within them are the opportunities to transform our situation. And in general, our challenges are common in nature and similar in magnitude. But the direct impact of the crises are felt differently within our individual homes and communities. All of these problems are ultimately unique and local and require unique and local solutions Solutions that are best created by members from within the community. And that resiliency, regenerative systems, prosperity, abundance, freedom and independence cannot come from the whole. It must come from the parts. And paradoxically, as we come into greater integrity, integritas, and wholeness within our homes and our communities, that is reflected in the whole and the truth is, there are no easy prescriptions or magic solutions, but through intelligent action, clear plans, investing our resources, and courageously creating our independence, my prayer is that you'll find it's 100% possible. And that we are the butterfly generation. It's time to rise and shine. Time to transform and fly. 